Now, I've been getting quite a few questions over email about the part of the assignment that requests for you to conduct mean standard deviations and Cronbach's alphas, as well as overall correlations. So I thought I'd make you a quick video showing you exactly how to do this using the example of stress that we covered in class last week. Okay, so before I do that, I want to quickly revise the overall purpose of factor analysis. Okay, so why do we do a factor analysis? Well, there are many reasons. For example, we might want to identify latent structures. We might simply want to reduce the data. Now in the assignment, um, and also in the example we covered in class last week, the ultimate reason we want to conduct a factor analysis is to finalize a set of items or subtests in order to measure one or more constructs in a questionnaire. Now when you go through this process, the first thing that you want to do is you want to initially develop a set of items measuring something of interest. Okay, in the class last week we spoke about um, negative psychological symptoms. And what we did in class is we conducted a factor analysis looking for underlying themes in this, um, in this data structure. Okay, so we found a number of underlying themes. These were stress, anxiety and depression. We then came up with a factor structure that was based on the EFA and tested this factor structure in the CFA and based then on the EFA and CFA, we ended up with a final set of items to use in order to measure our three constructs of interest. This was stress, anxiety and depression. So the ultimate or overall result of this process should be a psychometrically sound questionnaire. And by psychometrically sound, I mean um, something that is reliable and valid. So first, once we've um, conducted these factor analyses and come up with our final set of items, we then need to test the reliability of the questionnaire, the Cronbach's alpha, which is how we test for internal reliability using SBSS. Right, so what I have on the screen at the moment is the questions we used in class last week that assess a range of negative psychological symptoms. Okay, so we then conducted the factor analysis and we ended up with a factor structure that looked like this. All of the items loaded onto one of three primary constructs. This was stress, anxiety, and depression. Right, so this is what the data, data file would look like. What we want to do once we've selected our items based on our factor analysis to measure the three constructs is we want to assess the internal reliability of each of those constructs separately. So in order to do this, we click on Analyze, Scale, Reliability Analysis. We then select the items that measure that construct of interest. Here we have the example using stress. So we, we've chosen those items from the DAS that um, tap into stress. We select these two options from the Statistics menu, press Continue, and then press OK. And this is the output. And I've put an arrow up here next to the, the uh, number of interest. Okay, so this is Cronbach's alpha, which for this particular um, scale is 0.861. Now what Cronbach's alpha is, is it's an index of the internal reliability of a scale. In other words, it's a statistic representing the extent to which the items in that particular scale measure the same underlying thing or measure the same construct. Now the Cronbach's alpha has a maximum uh, value of 1. Okay, so if we had a Cronbach alpha of 1, this would indicate that all of the items in our scale are measuring the exact same thing. Now really the only way we would get a 1 is we would have maybe five items that are worded in the exact same way. Okay, so we're essentially asking the same thing in every item. If we had a Cronbach alpha of 0, there'd be absolutely um, no overall uh, thing that those items are actually measuring. Okay, so what we want, we want a, a level for our alpha that indicates that, generally speaking, our items are tapping into the same underlying construct. Okay, so we want a level of about 0.7 or above. So what we have here is 0.86, which is generally regarded as a, a good level of Cronbach's alpha. Now you would need to calculate Cronbach's alpha for the number of factors that are revealed in your factor analysis, or the number of underlying constructs you're trying to measure. Right, so in the um, example, we had stress, anxiety, and depression. Therefore, we'd need to calculate three alphas, which reflect 
the internal reliability of stress, anxiety, and depression. And you do it the exact same way I did here for, for stress. In the assignment, depending how many factors you end up with for workplace reasoning, that's how many alphas you'll need to calculate for that, for that final table. All right, so once you've calculated the internal reliability for your um, subtests or your subscales, you then need to calculate the means, standard deviations, and correlations for each of these subscales and also put them in a table. Okay, so what I'll do for the remainder of this video is go through the process in SPSS, how you generate these statistics, again talk about what they mean, and finally I'll show you how to put them into an APA format table. Okay, so what we need to do first is we need to calculate total scores for each of the three subscars we've created. So as I said before in class, we came up with three constructs. One was stress, one was anxiety, and one was depression. I'll do this example just for stress, and then you can do the same thing to the, um, to the remain, remaining scales. Now in order to calculate the total score, you need to go to transform, then compute variable, Okay, so we use this in order to um, in order to create a new variable that's a combination of other variables we have in our data set. Okay, so we might call our our new variable uh, stress uh, underscore total. Now that just indicates that the the variable that we're calculating reflects the the total of all of the stress items. Okay, so we then go to the uh, variable list and we choose the items that relate to stress and we simply sum them. Okay, so DAS1 plus DAS6, 18, and that looks like it. Okay, so once we've done that, like I said, we're just creating a total score. Uh, another option would be, a, would be to create a mean score. So once you've actually summed them, you then divide by the amount that you're actually summing up. Look, mathematically they're equivalent, so we'll just keep it simple and we'll just create total scores. So once you've created this numeric expression, you just select OK, and SPSS will then calculate the total score for that, um, for that scale. And here it is in the, the end of the data file, just here. Okay, so a new variable called stress total for each of the participants in our data file. Okay, so you can see that there is quite a range in the amount of stress people are experiencing. Now what you'd expect with stress, just like any other negative psychological variable, is that most people would be quite low in this construct, but there'd be a few people who are quite high. Okay, so most people are uh, you know, less than 10 or so, where there are quite a few people in the data set that are a little bit higher. You can see there's a few 18s and 20s as we go down the data set. Okay, so you probably have quite a strong positive skew in this data set. Okay, so what I've done now is I've created total scores for the other two subscales. So what you can see if we scroll down, you can see each person's score on each of those subscales. All right, so what we have here is person number 127 has a score of 10 for stress, a score of 4 for anxiety, and a score for a four for depression. Now what we want to do with this data is we then want to calculate means and standard deviations and also find out what the correlations between these three subscales actually are. We want to put this into the same table as our internal reliability data that we just calculated previously. Okay now in order to calculate um, these statistics what we want to do is we want to go to analyze then descriptive statistics, and then frequencies. All right, we then choose the variables that we're interested in. Now we want to look at our three total scores. So we select those three, put them into the variables box, and then we choose the statistics we want to look at. Okay, so we want to look for the mean, the standard deviation. That's really all that we're interested in for now. So we click on continue and then OK. So we can see that we have the mean for each of these three variables as well as a standard deviation for each of these variables. Now these values go straight into that table I was talking about before. 
Okay, so we have most of the data we need for that table now. The last thing we need to calculate is the correlations between each of the subscales. Now in order to do this, we click on again analyze, correlate, bivariate, because we want to look at the bivariate correlations. And again, we choose the three variables that we're interested in looking at, which is stress, anxiety, and depression. Choose those three variables and click OK. And here is the output. All right, so you can see we have quite a strong correlation between stress and anxiety of 0 0.599. Quite a strong correlation between depression and stress, as well as between depression and anxiety. Okay, this is really what we'd expect. As we discussed in class last week, you'd expect that people who were stressed out to also be high in anxiety and depression. Um, similarly, you'd expect people who are high in anxiety to also be high in depression and so on because these negative symptoms tend to go together statistically. Okay, so we found that our variables that were created based on the factor analysis correlate. And this makes sense because the, the underlying factors in our factor analysis also correlated. Okay, so this is basically all the information you need to generate in order to put together that uh, table I was talking about. So what I'll do now is I'll quickly show you what that table looks like once you put it into Word. Okay, now the way that I like to construct my tables uh, in Word is I initially copy the table over from SPSS. All right, so this is the SPSS table copied straight into Word. Now you definitely don't want to include tables looking like this in the assignment because tables like this, which is basically the, the, the raw form of the table, isn't in an APA format and you will lose marks if you actually just paste it in like this. What we want to do is we want to clean up this table a little bit and put it into APA format. And the way that I do it is I initially will split these cells um, so that we can then delete this entire column here. Okay. Delete cells, delete entire column, and OK. So we then have a very simple correlation matrix. What we then want to do is we then want to get rid of the scores in the upper diagonal because the upper diagonal simply mirrors the values we have in this lower diagonal. So you just 0 0.599, 0 0.599, 0 0.659, 0 0.659 and so on. So we can just delete them manually. But we can also get rid of the total scores. We don't need to indicate the actual sample size in this table. Okay, so what we end up with in this table is three correlation values. And this is to be expected because we've only got three correlations as we have three variables correlating with each other. Okay, so you can see that most of the values in this table we simply get rid of. We also don't need to retain this column here because again, this repeats information that's available elsewhere in the table. Okay, so now we end up with a rather small looking table. We need to now insert a few more columns because this is where we want to put the means, the standard deviations and the alphas. So I usually like to insert three columns just to the right of our first column. Right click in this section here, click on insert columns to the right and we do that twice. Well, now in the first column we put in the title means and then we then list the means for each value there. Then we put in the standard deviations and finally the Cronbach alphas. And I'll just write in alpha because this is generally recognized as a, a shorthand version of Cronbach alpha. All right, so I'll put those in. Okay, so I've now inserted the mean, standard deviations, alphas and correlations for all of those values. So this is pretty much the, all the information we need in this table. The next thing I want to do is put this into something that resembles APA format. At the moment, this is quite messy. All right, so the first thing I want to do now is just make sure the font is equivalent for all of those, um, all of the text that we have in the table. Yeah, so I just might want to change my font to this one here. 
Okay, I also want to ensure that they're about the same size and that they're not bold. Okay, so I've made my font equivalent. Now what I need to do is take out these SPSS shorthands and put on something that is a bit more meaningful. So I may as well just call this first variable stress. This second one anxiety. And this third one depression. Okay, fix up my spelling mistake and do the same with stress and anxiety here. Okay, so you can already see my tables getting a lot neater. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to align our, our, our figures in the table so that they're consistent with each other. So what I generally do is I'll just select everything, click on cell alignment and just choose um, left aligned. Okay. Okay, you can still see we have a few things a little bit out of alignment. So what I'll do is I'll just select everything again and just look for where those uh, alignment problems exist. And you can see here that um, we just have a few things in the wrong cells. So it's just a matter of cutting and pasting, put them into the correct spot. Okay, you can also see in this that we have a number of cells that we're simply not using. Okay, again, we can just simply delete those cells. Right, so to, to delete, we simply uh, right click in the cell we want to delete, or the, sorry, I should say the row that we want to delete, and click on delete cells, and this time we want to delete the entire row. Okay, unfortunately, we delete our stress as well, but we can simply rewrite that once we've um, deleted what we want to delete. Okay, so once we've done that with all of our variables, we end up with a table that is starting to look a lot more like APA format and a lot neater. Um, we then want to do a couple more things before we finalize them. We then need to um, select the rows and columns so that it's consistent with APA format. Okay, so basically what we do is we want to only include the top and the bottom borders in the table. Okay, so we just about have it in APA format. The only thing we need to do now is put in a title, which should also be in APA format. Okay, so we just put in table one in regular font, and then in italics, we put in a title for the table. We might just want to write something like descriptive statistics. So something basic like that. It doesn't have to be this exact title, but you can um, use your imagination to come up with something appropriate. Okay, so we should also give this a number, table one, and that is the table in APA format. Okay, so that's the final table of means, standard deviations, alphas, and correlations for the example we did in class, for the uh, DAS example. And you'll need to do a similar thing for your assignment for the uh, workplace reasoning subscales based on the factors that you would have uh, created in your factor analysis. So this really is the final product of a factor analysis when the purpose is to finalize a set of items for a questionnaire. Okay, it gives you an overall idea of the descriptive information given by, by that particular test. Okay, well that's the end of the video for today. If you have any more questions about that, feel free to send me an email or drop by my office and, and come and see me. Thanks.